still had the Becky one? Yeah. I Roman mean, Reigns won? You, you like him. No, I thought he was the one that I didn't like. That's Rock's cousin. Yeah, but the mean one, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he's okay. I like the other one. You like the Usos only? Oh, but you only like Jay. You don't like Jimmy. Yeah. Jay was the one that was with Reigns. Jimmy oh, was kind of like intertruding. So you only like Jay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Roman's okay. He's second on the list. So and Jay's first. Jay, Roman, Jimmy? Yeah. Oh my god. That, that, you're, you're a very rare breed. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like staying that way too. this video with the disclaimer because this review show is going to be filmed a little differently so obviously if you watched the predictions I said that Skylar couldn't watch it and I couldn't get anyone else to review it for me so I got my roommate to help me but my roommate did not watch the whole card she watched I believe seven of the ten matches so basically I am going to she's going to help me do the beginning part of the show and I'm going to do the end but this is the disclaimer that she it's going to be filmed a little differently so um it's me hi so the matches i am left with is the usos in the hurt business biggie and drew mcintyre becky lynch bianca belair and tasha banks and roman reigns and brock lesnar so let's start with the pre-show um the usos taking on the hurt business and just a fun simple tag team match i thought this match was really good and actually really simple meaning that it was put together kind of last minute i believe they announced it the other day really simple really really fun the Usos easily take up the pick up the win just because you know they are the Smackdown Tag Team Champions but it was a good showing for the Hurt Business and this was a way to get the crowd excited for what was to come being that the Hell in a Cell match was going to kick off the show are we starting with Bobby no we're going in order we start with, oh. start with Seth oh I didn't know the order of these happened I know it okay. so Seth and Edge are first so I'll start so, this match was very scary. I was not prepared, but Seth killed it. Edge killed it. It was so much fun. I mean, um, Edge scared me a little bit when he pushed Seth into the cell, went through the table. Seth scared me when he did the sunset flip off the ladder, because that's how he hurt his knee originally. But this match was really the match of the night. This is where the feud has to end. I can't see them doing another match and dragging this out, because even at the end, you just saw Edge like, thank God I won, but I'm really tired, but I'm also really proud of Seth. So I do not see this feud continuing, and I hope Seth and Edge don't get lost in the shuffle on Monday Night Raw. What did you think? I thought that match was really, really long. I came back from track practice. I got to decompress. And it was still going. And the majority of the time, they were just laying on the mat, panting, like dogs. It was 100 degrees there. Yeah, okay. Then why didn't they just end the match quicker? They had four hours to kill! Mm. When you have a four hour show, some things have to go long and some things have to go short. Well, why can't you just divide them up? Because the WWE isn't that smart. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't a thing we do. Clearly. Next, we have Mustafa Ali versus Mansoor. This is where the karate guy came from. I know, this one was kind of funny. Like, I didn't fully see the match in full, but I did see the ending half and the karate guy just coming out and the guy panicking, being like, hold up, hold up. I'm like, we don't even know the guy's face yet. And he was already panicking. And then when the guy, like, showed his face, he was like, oh, okay, I can take this. And then he gets kicked in the face and it's a knockout. I'm just like, Cause he's, wow. he's an Olympian karate man. I know, but I just find it funny. Like, the whole thing was just funny. 
I will say this match was a huge deal because it was the first time two Muslim wrestlers competed in the same ring, especially in Saudi Arabia, which is a country full of people who practice the Muslim religion, so that is a huge deal for them. This match was really good. Obviously, Mantor took the win just because it is his hometown. Mantor is undefeated at this event since 2018. He's won every single match he's wrestled. But this was a fun match. I think Ali and Mantor really work well together, and I'm excited to see what they do on the Blue Brand starting tonight with Friday Night SmackDown, your favorite show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's your favorite show. Next, we had your favorite people. Wait, which one is that? Omos. We're talking. Oh about yes, <laughs> we're with Omos now. Ali's favorite wrestler, for whatever reason, is Omos. So let's talk about your other. We'll talk about the camel. What did you think of Riddle on the camel? Okay, one, I found that funny. Especially Viper, that's his name, right? Viper? <laughs> <laughs> Randy Orton. Whatever. They kept calling him Viper the entire time. That's what the announcers kept saying. So we're going to call him Viper. Anyway, when, <laughs> when, when Flip Flop dude ran off, he was just like, what the hell? Where are you going? <laughs> and he comes back with a camel. The disappointment in his face was so funny. And I bet you, he wanted to ride the camel too. But, you know, it's okay. It was just so funny, that entire scenario. I'm surprised they didn't lose because I would have really thought that Randy would have been like, you know what, why'd you get a camel and not me? So you think, so not only do you think Omos <laughs> is going to turn on uh, AJ, you also think that Orton is going to turn on Riddle for the camel. Yeah, but clearly that didn't happen since they won. So you only think Omos is going to turn on AJ? Yes. Because Omos is better than AJ. Yes. I really do because, like, again, even the announcers were saying it, that he was gaining a lot of confidence in the ring. And so since they lost that match, so he's going to think that AJ isn't a good enough wrestler, so he's going to leave AJ and be like, I'm going to crush you. And he's literally going to crush him because, like, he's a really tall dude. <laughs> he's seven foot three. Exactly. He's a really tall dude. Did, did you think the match was good even though your favorite didn't win? Yes. <laughs> but they cheated. How did they cheat? They pulled Omos away from the ring. That's not cheating. That's cheating. That's strategy. No, they cheated. So you're saying if you and I were in a tag team, you would not go to the other side and do that? No, I would. I'm not saying that I wouldn't cheat. I'm That's just saying not, they cheated. It's not cheating. It's Becky cheating. cheated. Becky held the rope when she took the pinfall. Becky cheated. No, Becky does not cheat. <laughs> I thought this match was really fun, <laughs> even though it was the same exact finish we saw at SummerSlam with the um the Phenomenal Forum into the RKO. What are you doing? The only <laughs> note is on this page! I was looking at the rest of them, because I was wondering if you did, okay. like, this on any other thing, but no. no okay, you could look at everything I sell for wrestling. Um... The match was really fun. I'm excited to see what AJ and Omos do on SmackDown. Hopefully that helps rebrand that SmackDown tag team division because I definitely think Raw and SmackDown need to rebrand both their tag team divisions because WWE has no idea how to book a tag team division. And now we're going to talk about your other fave. We're, we're going to crown a queen. Ah, Zelina. This one was... It was alright. I mean, it was a really quick match. The way that she won, though, was kind of clever, though. Like, be like, yes, I'm just going to hold your legs here so you cannot get up. It's called a pinfall. Yeah, well, either way, I thought it was kind of clever. But then you also said you didn't like Dewdrop. No, I'm not a big fan of Dewdrop. I don't know. Kind of just, like, when I saw her come out, I was just like, what's up with the flower in your hair? And then, like, I don't know. She seems, like, really sweet. And I feel like her character just does not fit. I don't like her character. She was a totally different character when she was in NXT. Her name was Piper Niven. She was a badass. It was so much better. Oh, okay. Yeah. I probably would have liked that version more. Yeah. So, obviously, this was the longest match of the Queen's Crown Tournament. Obviously, all the matches have been between a uh, minute 30 and two minutes. But this was six minutes. Yeah. That's the problem. All these matches were like two minutes long. Wow. Well, I felt like that one was really quick. It was six minutes. It was the longest match of the tournament. But, but no, not no, that one. No, of the Queen's Crown tournament, not of the whole pay-per-view. Oh, I was going to say, because Seth and Edge, that was definitely longer than six minutes. <laughs> yeah, we know. we know. That one was too long. But oh. that being six minutes, like that was like, oh, refresher. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. <laughs> I'm really happy Zelina won, um, especially because of the fact that, you know, she did get fired, now she's back, WWE's finally going to use her. I really think that she should go after the Royal Women's Championship, just because, you know, now that she's queen, she should be able to challenge for a title. I think that would be super smart to do. But I just hope that Dewdrop and Zelina can be dominant on both their separate brands, with the brands with the draft starting tonight, and now we get to talk about Bobby and Goldberg. Hee <laughs> hee. Wait, you mean Bobby and... Yeah, Bobby and Goldberg. Bobby Lashley oh, versus Goldberg. Goldberg, yes. I am sad that Bobby lost. I feel like Goldberg should not have won. I do believe that it was a misunderstanding. So, therefore, since it was a misunderstanding... What was a misunderstanding? The, the, he should have stayed her behind the ropes, his son! Oh, Gage? Yes! <laughs> Circumstances like well, the falls come anywhere yesterday. Yes, <laughs> but no, his son entered the ring. You should expect to get pinned or something. Like, like the hell? And he came first at Bobby. Yes. So therefore, Bobby had every right to defend himself. That is how the law works. If we're gonna bring the law in. WWE like excuse me I feel like Bobby should have won that did you like well Bobby did you see Bobby put his arm open it was really bad yeah I saw that so, so you don't like Goldberg no you think Gage broke the law well okay so now I'm going to bring up Goldberg kept saying that he wanted to kill Bobby Lashley so do you also see that that's a problem with the law yeah as a threat yeah and the fact that he nearly did, and he threw my favorite Hurt Business guy right over his head! Cedric Alexander. <laughs> he, was just, he was just like, whoop! <laughs> she, he beat up Shelton too. Yeah, but like, and he broke the stick! I think that was Sheldon's stick. Yeah, that was Sheldon's kind of stick. He just broke it! Yeah, that's the point. Bobby was the heel. Goldberg's the face. I still feel like Goldberg should have lost. <laughs> so for whatever, Saudi loves Goldberg. Like Gold, the Goldberg chants were the loudest of the night. This for me, I wasn't really interested in this feud because they're feuding over fatherhood, which I feel like is kind of weird. And I guess you know, according to her, breaking the law. <laughs> But this match was fine. It was a little bit longer than I expected. The match was maybe like eight minutes long. Eight minutes. That's quick for you. Yeah. It's, it's within your time frame. It is. I'm never, if it's my attention span. I'm never showing you a 30 minute match ever again. But I thought the match was fine. Obviously Goldberg's gonna go away for a while. He fit his two match of the year requirement. So then whatever Bobby's gonna do. I think Bobby should go after Big E since Bobby never really challenged for his title since he lost it to Big E when he cashed in his money in the bank. Mm. That did happen. Yeah, I know. I feel like that would fit too. That would fit? That would make sense? Mm -hmm. Oh, if she's saying it makes sense that he's doing something right. And the final match I get to review with I'm you. I'm glad that Big E won, though. You're, you're happy Big E won? Yeah. Drew's kind of annoying now. No yeah. offense to Drew. Are you going to tell them what you what you call Drew? He's fake Seth Rollins. <laughs> but why? Because he looks like Seth Rollins. No, okay, he's much bigger than him. He still looks like Seth Rollins. Like, the wet hair, sleek back, like, he looks like Seth Rollins. He's like five inches taller than Seth. No, still looks like a fake Seth Rollins. He's just a taller fake Seth Rollins. Alright, and the last match I get to review with you is for King. Which one was that? Finn Balor and Xavier. Ah, right. Ooh, trombone guy. No, not trombone guy. Yes, that is trombone guy, yes. yes. Oh, yeah, trombone guy. Okay. Yeah, I was I was proud of him. I was like, yes, you're gonna take it. He's not the pancake dudes, are they? Yeah, they are. Oh, okay, yeah. They have a great breakfast option. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but they're on different brands now. So Xavier and Kofi are on SmackDown and Biggie's on Raw. Separate them. They did this last year. You were here for this. But why did they do that? Because WWE's not smart. Because they think that Biggie can shine on his own without Xavier and Kofi. They'll be back eventually! I promise you they'll be back together and we'll rejoice. Oh, yay. Yay? Yay. I'm happy. I do like Xavier, though. You do like Xavier? I do. So He has fun. He has fun? Mm-hmm. 
and he controls the cameras now. Did you see that? When he was like, once he got the crown and everything, he's like, I'm king. So you cut to camera one when I say you cut to camera one. I was like, yes, you go, dude. That would be you. I know. That's why I, I, I relate to him. On a so, overall, did you enjoy it? I did. I enjoyed Bobby Lashley's fight and the trombone guy's fight. I did not really enjoy the Omos fight just because Omos lost. I feel like he was kicking ass, so he should have won, but you know, it's okay. And you didn't like Seth and Edge? No, that one was way too long. You yes. didn't like the- you like the Queen's crown, but you don't like yes, Dewdrop. Yes, Zelina won. Yes. Zelina. Not Zelina. 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 And I'm glad that- Big E not, I'm not- I don't care that Ali got kicked in the face, but like, I liked it just because like, he was just like, mm, and he got knocked out. And, uh, you're happy Becky won? Yes, I didn't get to see that match. I did not want to see that match. So the thing with Allie is all three of them are Allie's favorite wrestlers. So they were all wrestling each other. She wanted to know if it could end in a tie. Yes. I mean, it's possible, right? No, a triple threat's no DQ. It's possible in my sport. Okay, but that's track. So in a triple threat, when there's no rules, it is physically impossible for it to end in a tie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ro hey, Roman won. That's true. We you, like that Roman one. Yeah, you had a good day. Did I really? Because the Hurt Business lost. Bobby lost. Seth won. Omos lost. Seth lost. Xavier won, though. That Is was it? pretty cool. But you got, at least you got to see the Hurt Business. Remember, they broke up for a period of time. Now they're back, so technically you won. That's true. They are back. They're together again. Happy endings, everyone! So we have Big E versus Drew McIntyre, and this to me was the sleeper match of the card just because I felt like these two were going to put on such a banger of a match, which they absolutely did. Big E just like mocking Drew, being like, so, you're going to hit the ropes, you're going to hit the ropes, you're going to try and do something, you're going to try and do something, and he absolutely killed it. This match was really good. Obviously, Big E picks up the win because he is the WWE World Heavyweight, he is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and since Drew's going to SmackDown, it did not make sense for him to win the title. And I'm excited to see what Big E does on Raw. I definitely see Rollins actually being a contender for him. Obviously not right now because Rollins has lost a lot. But even Bobby being a contender could also be really cool too since he really didn't get his shot at Big E when he did beat him for the title when he cashed in his money in the bank. But this match was really good. I also really liked at the end how Drew kind of did like the thumbs up like... You know, you're good in my book, kid. Like, go do cool things on Raw. I'm going to do good things on SmackDown. And when we meet again, it's going to be another banger of a match. Then from this, we go into the triple threat match for that SmackDown Women's Championship. Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. In my opinion, this should have main evented just because we were in Saudi Arabia. And I felt that it would have been even more historic. So I only have two matches on the card, but to have a women's match main event. I thought it would have been absolutely phenomenal. This match was fun. I mean, I think the thing that kind of sucks is because you are in Saudi Arabia and you have to wear different gear, you could definitely see how tired and exhausted they were getting throughout the match because it isn't the coldest in Saudi Arabia. I mean, it is quite hot there. And to do what they do in that gear is very, very difficult. So I do give them a lot of credit. Um, there were a lot of fun spots in this match too, and I definitely like the fact that Becky won by cheating because it signifies the fact that she is a heel, even though no one wants to believe she is a heel. She is. She cheated. She put her hand on the rope to try to get the advantage to pin Sasha. And I also did find it interesting that she actually did pin Sasha, not Bianca, because I had predicted that Bianca was going to either take the pin or submission, no matter whatever way that Becky was going to win. But I feel like it played into the story because Sasha's the one that pinned Becky at SmackDown on Friday. So now, Retribution and Karma, Becky Penn Sasha. So I thought that was kind of cool. I'm very intrigued to see what happens with these titles. I know that they're just going to swap it with Charlotte and do what they did last year with the Tag Team Championships and the New Day and the Street Profits. I personally don't want that because I really feel like that's just a waste of time and energy. But I also don't want them to combine the belt or have Becky have both belts just because I feel like that moves the women's division a little bit more backwards. So, I don't know. They're probably just going to swap. Or we'll see Becky and Charlotte at Survivor Series, which I'm not complaining about me that I'm going to be there live and those two really can't put on a bad match. But, I mean, I know a lot of people want to see uh, Sasha and Bianca go at it again and, try and get the match that we didn't get at SummerSlam. And for our main event, 
Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. So I was not really looking forward to this match, meaning that we have seen this match five times and it is not interesting any of the five times. The only difference is there was actually a story to this, but I feel like if you just compare this match to any of the other matches that the two of these have had, it is literally the same match with the same moves. The only thing that was intriguing was of course what side was Heyman going to pick? Was he going to go with Ranger? Was he going to go with Lesnar? But we didn't even get an answer. So basically the match is going on and you know it's a typical F5. Superman punch, spear, German suplex, you know, the basic stuff that you expect. So, Brock goes for the F5, hits Charles Robinson, Charles Robinson on the ground, Brock tries to pin Reigns, Brock then, like, annihilates Charles Robinson for absolutely no reason whatsoever, and now we don't have a ref. So now, Heyman takes the championship and throws it into the middle of the ring. So this is the throwback to WrestleMania 31, the Raw right before it, where they were in the middle of the ring and like tug of warring over the championship, so they did the same thing again, but you're supposed to believe, hmm, Heyman threw his title in the middle of the ring, who was he really aiming for? Was he aiming for Reigns or was he aiming for Lesnar? Um, nonetheless, Reigns wins the tug of war, Reigns hits Lesnar with the championship, and Reigns gets to win. And Reigns, the, and Reigns and the Usos immediately run out of there. So the other problem I have with this was that you did a ref bump when you would announce on the pre-show that this was going to be a no disqualification match and you had both members say, you know what, we don't want this to be a no DQ, we want this to be a regular match, but you did an ending that was no disqualification, which to me didn't make sense. Like, I would have rather just kept the no DQ. I also don't understand why they stripped it. That is very unlike WWE and very weird. So that's another thing I didn't understand. But obviously this isn't the end because we didn't get an answer to the question of who had, what side Heyman's really on. So I am going to early predict that Brock Lesnar is sadly going to win the Royal Rumble and um, he is going to wrestle Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 38. Meaning that The Rock is not going to beat WrestleMania 38 and that match between The Rock and Roman Reigns is going to happen at WrestleMania 39 in California. <sighs> but, regardless, I thought this match was okay. I mean, like I said, I wasn't really invested in it just because we've seen it so many times and it's very similar to all the other times we've seen it. But this card to me was really good. It had to be the best Saudi show we've seen. I believe there's been six or seven Saudi shows and this had to be the best one. It was the best card put together. There weren't many part-timers. It was a lot of new, fresh competitors that you see every single week and that's a good thing about you know, this show in particular was that it wasn't focused on like a Goldberg or an Undertaker or a Shawn Michaels or a Triple H. It was focused on the new competitors and that was really cool to see. And if this is the momentum they're going to keep for the Saudi shows, then I think the Saudi shows are going to be more successful. I also do find it very funny that we need to go to Saudi Arabia to have a really good pay-per-view from WWE, meaning that they had this momentum all year and they waited till October to finally put out a good pay-per-view. So yeah, so that's it for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed Allie's little two cents. I'm filming this before Allie comes back, so I don't even know what she said, but I'm assuming it's intelligent, meaning that her and I watched, I watched all of it in class and she watched it on my TV in our dorm room. So I'm very excited to see what she says. But that's it for me, and I hope you guys check out my Halloween Havoc predictions, which are up on the Whole Thread Network, as well as my Bound for Glory predictions, which is also up to me, that Bound for Glory is tomorrow. And, of course, make sure to check out my SmackDown and Rampage review up tomorrow as well. Um, and that's it for me. And I'll see you.